This is the introduction for PowerShell Basics for Udemy students taking the ETL course. PowerShell is an object-oriented scripting language, and there are a lot of people who will teach PowerShell or teach object-oriented programming fairly high level, and um, I would say about 70% of my friends who've taken object-oriented classes have told me that they have walked away being more confused and have decided to not do programming, which I guess if people want to really test if they're built for it or not, that might be very useful, but I tend to think that it's because there's a failure on the person who was teaching, uh, not necessarily on the student. So it's important to understand for this course, you only need to know some basics. You can learn more advanced things. There's nothing wrong with that, but stick to the, the basics for now and then build on those basics. A lot of times when we learn the basics, we may not learn everything perfectly accurate, and that's okay because it's kind of like in English. There's tons of exceptions, and you would get overwhelmed with the exceptions, so let's stick to this generalizations. Um, first thing I want to say is because there will be comments. This right here is a multi-line comment. It starts with this, and it ends with this. And, um, and then the one-line comment is just a hash, and then the comment. I usually will do two hashes. So if you see you two hashes, it's force of habit. T sequel, a comment is this. C sharp, a comment is that. And that's why I, I do two hashes, but it's just really one hash that you have to do. Okay, so that's comments, and you don't need to get lost in that. It's very simple. Um, the next thing is that when we talk about object-oriented programming, for the sake of this course, all you need to understand are objects, methods, and properties. And I'm going to give an incomplete analogy. No analogy for anything is perfect, but this analogy I think will help beginners kind of understand what's going on with objects, methods, and properties. So I'm going to, we're going to do two sentences, and if you want to write out these sentences, you can pause this video and write them out. But the first sentence is, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dogs, and the next sentence is, they woke up and chased after it. So the first thing I want you to note is, I want you to square fox and dogs. Those are nouns, and most of us know that most of us know that a noun can be a person, place, a thing, or an idea, right? Then we have lazy and quick brown, and I want you to circle those. Those are adjectives, and then I want you to underline jumped. That is a verb. Now you'll notice that in the second sentence, it's they woke up and chased after it. And I'm, you can pause this video and answer the question, but I think most of you can answer this on the fly. What do you think they refers to, and what do you think it refers to? So you can put an X across they and it, and we, um, we will refer to those are pronouns. I want you to think of variables as pronouns. Now, variables are a part of object-oriented programming, and variables, as you'll see, are like placeholders for objects and sometimes a property of an object. Not always. And again, for the sake of this for the sake of this course, a variable can be a placeholder for a property of an object and for an object. Um, again, they can they can go a little deeper, but we're gonna leave it at that for you to understand. And it's like pronouns. So for the sake of this example, they woke up and chased after it, you know exactly what they represents and what it represents. So let's demonstrate that. So we're gonna create a variable. Variables usually start with dollar signs and then the variable name, and they're red. And we are going to create a new object, and we're going to call the new object system dot data dot SQL client dot SQL connection. And this comes from the dot net the dot net library, just to show you. There you go, the dot net framework 4.5 SQL connection class. That's what we're accessing, and you'll notice. And of course, I know some of you. Well, look, what's constructors? Don't worry about it, okay? Properties, here's the properties of this class, and here are the methods of this class. Okay, yes, there are other things, but stick to those. Really master those, get those down. Now, by the way, as a note, Josh Kaufman, who I highly respect, learned Ruby in 20 hours. He learned Ruby in 20 hours, not by sitting there and focusing on every single exception to the rule. He learned the generalizations and built on those. Now. You can become a master level programmer. You're probably going to want to go to college if you want to do that. Um, for the sake of this course, it's more about functionality. And so with objects, methods, properties, and variables, you can pretty much do what you need to do. Uh, yeah, there are some other tools that you can use, but for this course, you don't need to. So 
we have created an object, um, system data, SQL client, SQL connection. So we've kind of created a SQL connection object and we've stored that object in the variable X. So now X is this object. It is a placeholder. It is like they refer to the dogs. So because it is the object, we have some attributes of that object, right? So how do you know what a property is? If we do X dot, we can see that a property is what looks like to be a little table. And then it has like client connection ID, connection string, connection timeout. And again, you can go back to the MSDN page and you can see as well. You'll notice that those things that are popping up, hey, it looks kind of like this. Okay, so that's pretty cool. The other thing too is we can also see the methods of that object. Begin transaction, change database, clone, close. Methods are pink boxes. I think of them as pink boxes and they look like they're moving. Now, I don't, I don't know what the little three dots, maybe that's not what it was supposed to be, but they look like they're moving. Objects in Visual Studio are blue and then the pink boxes are, are, are the methods and they look like they're moving as opposed to the objects which are just there. So, but that may not be what those three dots are for, who knows. I'm, that's how it makes sense to me. And methods are like verbs. It's, it's like the quick brown fox jumped. He did something, right? Or it did something. Um, the dogs chased or woke up and chased. Okay, so we can set the connection string equal to something, right? We can say server equals server, database equals database, integrated security equals true, and that's like describing this object. We are describing it. We are adding a connection string to it. I mean, let's go back to the sentence. What if we just said the fox jumped over the dogs? That actually, that doesn't actually make that much sense because uh, why didn't the dog snap at it, right? When we add lazy and quick, starts to make more sense. By the way, brown? Really? Fox? I thought they were red. Anyway, so if we just said the quick fox jumped over the lazy dogs, that would make sense. So adjectives kind of describe things. Without adjectives, if you take out all the adjectives in a sentence and do it sometime, you'll see that uh, you know it didn't really work very well. It didn't make sense. That's the same thing. I mean, we can declare a new object. If I tried to open a connection, but I'm not giving the connection string, it's not going to open because it's like, but but where? And that's because it doesn't doesn't make sense to it. We're kind of telling it what to do here. We're telling PowerShell what to do. Now, objects, as I said, because again, this variable is holding this object, so X has become that object, basically. Objects have methods. So in the case of a connection, if we want to do something at a database, we need to connect to the database. When we connect to the database, we open a connection. When we're done connecting to the database, whoops, we are going to close the connection. Another related analogy, by the way, for the uh, connection string is, is think of a uh, connection string as kind of like the address. We want to connect to something, but we need the address. You can't drive somewhere without the address. Of course, I don't know what technology nowadays you might be able to, but it's, I can't imagine that. So we open a connection, we close a connection, this is disposed. It's generally considered to be clean coding. You never know if the language you use is going to automatically trash things like .NET. So it starts to make more sense when we think of objects as like nouns and we create variables to hold those objects, which is very similar to using pronouns. I mean, we don't always want to say the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dogs, right? I mean, it's just easier if we say it jumped over them. I mean, once we know that um, it stands for the quick brown fox and they or them stands for lazy dogs, it's actually easier to do that, right? I mean, who wants to sit there and type this out all the time? I mean, think about how hard this is to type out all the time versus this. Man, it's much simpler to do this one, okay? So, and methods are the verbs, so they're going to be doing something. So it's like, again, when you go to this page, it kind of makes a lot more sense. You're like, oh, okay, so, you know, what are some things that I can describe with my object? Well, I can describe the database. I can point it to the database server version. Okay, well, let's see. It gets a string that contains a version of the instance of SQL server to which the client is connected. Oh, so 
um, I can get the the, the server uh, the server version. So yeah, if it's SQL Server 2008 or whatnot, um, the site or the state statistics enabled. That's pretty helpful, right? Methods, the same thing. So what can I do with a connection? So I have a connection here. What can I do with a connection? I can begin a transaction. I can close. I can create a command. I can dispose. All of these things tell you what you can do. And so, um, again, like you wouldn't describe a fox. Um, of course, I'm not going to be able to think of an adjective on the fly, but a lot of you can think of an adjective on the fly. But not every adjective in the English language can describe a fox, right? I mean, tall fox or handsome fox kind of sounds absurd. Pretty fox, yeah, but handsome? No. And so it's the same thing. It's, you're not going to have an infinite amount of properties for every object. And you're not going to have an infinite amount of uh, verbs for every, um, I'm sorry, an infinite amount of methods for every object. I mean, foxes don't fly, right? If I said the fox flew over the lazy dogs, that would kind of be invalid. Well, kind of. It would be invalid. And so that's kind of a way to, to make sense with what's going on with objects, methods, and uh, properties and variables. So for the sake of this course, you will be doing a lot of connecting and just focus on the verbs, or I'm sorry, focus on the methods, what's going on, what, what's happening with the connections, focus on what objects are being built, and then finally, with PowerShell, I do want to cover this really fast. PowerShell does come in with built-in functions. So if you'll give me a second here. I think I need to go to... Oops. Here we go. just want to do this really fast. So add content, for instance, is an example of a PowerShell function. And what this PowerShell function does is it appends data to a text file. So add content, you call it this, here's the file, and what are we going to add? The end, okay? Now you'll notice, commandlets. Now I believe they're called commandlets. I call them functions, but anyway, call them what you want. And look at all of these different commandlets that you have. Pretty cool stuff. And this is where you can get all kinds of information on you know, what, what do you want to do, what do you need to do. These may be appropriate for you. Okay, sometimes it doesn't cover everything. Set execution policy, by the way, is one that you probably will use if you save a script and then try to load it. Okay, and then finally, we can build functions too. So, now I'm in PowerShell 3.0, and the way that you'll find that out is if you type host dot version. Uh, I did the wrong thing. I executed that. Okay, enter. You'll see three. If you're using four or three, you're fine. If you're using two. At least from what I've gotten in terms of feedback on one of my articles I wrote for my uh, MS SQL Server tips is PowerShell 2.0 doesn't recognize some functions, so that's kind of interesting. All right, so if I type in function, my function, and you'll notice it's purple. Okay, and then I'm going to type in, um, let's type in uh, X. Let's just do consistency. So just like we cover in the series, x is a parameter, which is something that we give a function because the function is going to do something with the parameter. So a parameter is something that comes from the outside. Inside the function, it's going to do something with the parameter. In this case, what it's going to do, we're just going to write host, which means it's going to write out whatever x is. Okay. So then we say my function. So we're going to call my function. And you'll notice when we build my function, it's purple. right? But when we call my function, it's blue. Just note that. okay? And the way that we put in our parameters, we're going to say x, and we're going to say uh, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dogs. And what does it do? It prints this out. Now in PowerShell, it will show all of the code, but it will return the information that you need to know. The other thing that we can do in a function, I believe this happens in PowerShell 3, let me check is we can say string. And what this does, if you notice before when we called my function, hold on, let me do that again. Notice how when I hover over it, it says string x. I'm telling PowerShell that it's a string. So the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dogs. And it produces a string, right? Before this. 
Notice when I hovered over it, it said object X. So it's an object, which is just generic. Could be anything, right? So it's something to note. In the course, I don't think that's emphasized that much because, again, it PowerShell will generally know what to do with your objects if you're writing your code right. But you can force objects to be certain things. So if a person doesn't enter a string, it will return an error or whatnot. Now that just covers some, some very, very basics. So PowerShell has built-in functions that you can use, and I would highly suggest to go over a few of them. And we do cover some of them in the course. Anytime you see a function that usually involves a dash, um, for instance, add content, um, new item, uh, new object, export CSV, those are all built-in functions. And Definitely, you can Google each of them and you can read just about what they do. That's very helpful. We can also write our own functions, which is cool. We can wrap things. And why do we want to write functions? Because we can reuse it. We don't have to rebuild everything. If we build it just right, we can reuse our code. Um, PowerShell is object-oriented. Only focus on the objects, methods, properties, and variables. Don't worry about everything else. Again, you can get into that deeper. And then finally, we have comments in PowerShell, which can just be helpful to remind ourselves what's going on. So that just covers some very basic, basic information, but that will get you up and running in the course. And I can assure you that in no time after you get through the course, you'll know quite a bit of the power that you can do in PowerShell.